Hey everybody, Michael Snyder, Pacific Northwest Weather Watch. Today is April 24th, and today we're going to take a look at the trough incoming for the Pacific Northwest. But before that, we're going to get a nice warm day across the region today for most of the areas. You can see we're pretty well sunny, just a few cloud clouds moving over the area. We'll check out models and see what kind of weather they say we're going to get on into our extended as well. We'll take a brief look around the rest of the country. And we're going to talk about La Nina and El Nino a little bit and why certain areas of the ocean get a little bit warmer than others during these cycles. So checking things out, you look closely, you can see Mount Rainier, Mount Adams, Mount St. Helens. This is on the UW site. I will leave this link below in my description so you guys can check this out. This is really cool. You guys can see the the low clouds in these river valleys here that have yet to burn off and you can see the low clouds along the coastline mostly for uh, mostly cloudy days so far we'll have to see how much this burns off before the next system comes but you can see it mostly sunny around the rest of the area here you can really see the terrain features lake chelan here and you can see the snow-capped areas of the cascades down into oregon and eastern washington this a map like this or a satellite like this shows uh, dust storms for example when dust gets raised so that it shows forest fires this is a really good tool Checking out the rest of the country, there is still some winter weather advisories, blizzard warnings across the northern states, wind advisories, there's going to be some severe weather across the central portions of the country, already some severe thunderstorm watches for southern Oklahoma, northern Texas. Now, if we look here, this is SeaTac. If you look here at the green line here, this is SeaTac's normal temperature. You can see the average goes from about 56 to about the low 60s as we get towards the end of April. You can see we spent most of the month below average if you take a look at this. We had a couple days above average in that really warm day earlier on this month, but most of the month has been well below normal. This red line, these red lines here monitor the actual record highs here. So you can see we had a high of 89, I think, in 2016. I think we'll take a look at that. Actually, we can see that right here. 2016, we had three days in a row of 80 degrees or higher, including 89 on April 18th. Really impressive heat wave for April, but we're not dealing with anything like that now, even though today should be into the mid to upper 60s for portions of western Washington and Oregon today. Now, looking at Spokane here, I like their graphics. They put out beautiful spring day today, and then we're going to go back into the trophy pattern here, though, and they kind of highlight that with a chance of rain, even some convection for Monday, and that's going to continue for Tuesday. Some cascade snowfall, breezy, so we're going to go back into... A little bit of a stormy pattern here. And I wanted to show you guys this. This is severe weather across the country. Severe probabilities. This would be for late May. This is kind of peak season, late May here. And I'm just kind of showing where this severe probability exists. You can see it moves north during the summertime here. And you can see it includes portions of Montana. But it never gets to the Pacific Northwest. We just don't get access to this deep, rich moisture from the Gulf of Mexico. The Rocky Mountains are here and it just cannot... You know, it will not go over this terrain feature. Every once in a while, we can get a little bit of monsoon moisture moving up this way, but it's really rare and it's just hard to do. You see, if we put this into motion here, you get a little bit of that activity into Arizona, but not much comparatively to the central portions, Tornado Alley there. And as we go through the fall and winter months, you see it, it narrows down, but never completely disappears. And then it reemerges as we go on into spring. And you can see how it highlights in late May across uh, Oklahoma here. So this kind of shows today, you can see the tornado threat all the way from the Canadian border, really to the Mexico border. There's wind and hail possibilities too. So heads up if you have any concerns out there today. And this is the U a UW site here. So this kind of shows you what kind of sunshine you can expect during the day. It's really interesting. This is today. You can see that frontal system offshore here kind of blocking sunshine, but it should yield us another nice day today across the region. And then you can see those clouds approach. So I will leave the link for this site down there. You guys can check it out yourself as well. There's really cool um, satellite images there and there's really cool weather model information there including the 1.33 kilometer resolution really high resolution model it's really good when it snows and like for individual showers and uh, rainfall and wind and yeah so I'll, I'll put that in the link below for you guys this is trajectory same site here this kind of shows you where the wind or the air is coming from you can see it's coming from the southwest here it shows just how high it is and so they're going to going to be some sinking air in this scenario as it gets towards SeaTac and then rises back up the SeaTac hill here. So this is good for forest fires. If there's something going on over the Cascades and see easterly component and you want to know if Seattle is going to get smoke from that forest fire, you can go through this model and kind of get a prediction on where the trajectory of the air coming into the Seattle region is here, for example. 
So very handy tools here on the UW site. Again, I'll link that below. Now here's the European showing that frontal system moving towards us this evening on into tomorrow morning. And then it shows a convergent zone signature as we go through Tuesday afternoon as a shower activity continues. Mountain snows across the region. We're really going to cool down tomorrow and Tuesday. So sorry, warm weather lovers. You're going to have to deal with another pretty significant trough here for the next few days. And now checking out the thunderstorm potential, let's just go ahead and go to Tuesday here because this highlights the most potential really across the region. As you can see, pretty good signal for some lightning across western Washington, northern Willamette Valley here, British Columbia, southern British Columbia, east side of Vancouver Island. And then there's going to be another chance during Wednesday. It doesn't look as significant now, but we will take a look when, that, when we get closer. We have time to look at that. Now, looking at general trough position, mean trough and ridge position, this is why we have the nice day today. There's our next trough on its way. Now, we put this into motion. You see that trough really get established over us. This is yesterday afternoon's European run. And you can see this trough doesn't go anywhere, according to the European. Just keeps reinforcing itself all the way through next weekend. And then the Gulf of Alaska trough continues after that. So 10 days out here with really not much of a break. But this time of year, we usually do get some kind of break. So I'm thinking, I'm hoping that European is not correct. I wouldn't like to be rainy for the next 10 days, but I think there'll be some kind of break during this period. And the GFS kind of gives that idea. You'll see good model agreement, of course, in the short term and the trough reinforces itself, but then we build a ridge there as this troughing remains offshore a bit. Swings the system through here and the troughing is nearby though with kind of a dirty ridge out here on the West Coast. So we'll see which model wins out here as the GFS builds a ridge on in through early May with a big trough offshore. But we have time to look at that. We're getting off into fantasy land, getting ahead of ourselves a little bit there. But here's the European showing, highlighting the warm day today and then showing our below average temperatures through the rest of the week here on into next weekend with really everything below normal on through into early May. The GFS painting a little different picture, the warm day today, and then the troughing for a few days next week, and that starts to warm us back up, building a ridge on into the extended. But we'll see which model wins this. It's probably going to be some kind of compromise between the two, I would imagine. But right now, the European does not have this ridging coming here for later next weekend on into the following week. And this is another good site I like to visit here. I'll leave this link below to the Climate Center. You can click on any one of these stations and see past data, normal temperatures, you know, extreme record highs, ex uh, you know, snowiest days, all kinds of good information in here. So I'll leave that in a link below too. Now I wanted to go over this really quickly here too. This is sea surface temperature anomalies. You can see this La Nina pattern that's going on here, characterized by cold air that moves off the South America continent and includes the Central Pacific here. Now, this cold water here is because of we have increased trade winds, basically. We have winds pulling water on the surface away from the area, and you have to replace that with something, and that's upwelling that happens here. You bring colder water from the deeper depths of the ocean up off the coast of South America here. Then that cold water stretches out with those winds across the equatorial regions here, and we measure those sea surface temperatures here to base on whether it's La Nina or El Nino. The opposite happens during El Nino conditions where we get weaker winds and the warm water just kind of hangs out here off the coast of South America. And that's what El Nino is. And that creates different weather patterns. It changes how the jet stream affects North America and really in cross, across the entire globe. Now, you have to remember the Pacific Ocean, especially at the equator, is being bombarded by sunshine every single day. So the top layer is getting really warm. And if you push that warm water in any one direction, you're going to get warmer water, of course, where that water gets pushed. And if you're vacating an area, you're going to get upwelling in that area. And that's why this area cools down so much. So there's a little La Nina 101 for you, why the water cools down or warms up based on what pattern we are in. And I will leave this link below. This is the UW site. Lots of good weather model information and satellite imagery for you. So I hope you guys get a chance to go out and enjoy the nice day today because we're really going to cool down this week. It looks like thunderstorm potential off and on rainfall, but there should be some sun breaks mixed in here. It is springtime, so it shouldn't be just a gloomy day all day long for the rest of the week. So get out and enjoy those sun breaks while you can. Enjoy today, the last day the last nice day before we start to cool down again. So click like and subscribe and I'll talk to you guys tomorrow.